Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is The Lineup. Sit right here, Mr. Hunter. Uh, how many men will we look at? Mm, 31 altogether. Our man probably won't be any of these, but we want to cover every possibility. Please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention? Thank you. My name is Grab. Sergeant Matt Grab. I'll explain the latter. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, then name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner, as I call his name. Please be prompt with your questions or identifications. The questions I ask these suspects similarly to get an answer. Don't avoid, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Bring on the line. All right. Come on. Open up to the end of the stage. Right on up to the end. That's right. Now turn and face front hands to your sides and look straight ahead. Now, when I ask you questions, talk up so the people in the back can hear you. All right, number one, John Nathan, robbery. Face front and talk up. Where do you live, John? 66 and River Street. What's that? Siemens Hotel. Don't look at me. Look right out front so the people can see you. What do you do, John? Ship's cook. Anybody arrested with you? No. Any weapons? Yes. Pistol, wasn't it? Yes, sir. What kind of pistol? Uh, 32, I think. 38, I know. Yes. You have a car? Yeah, Chrysler. Well, sedan, a coupe or what? Sedan. What color? Black. Okay. Number two, David Moore, a soap. Where do you live, David? 205 South Newton. Can't hear him, Matt. Now, look, I don't want to tell you boys again. It's a long way to the back of the room, so you got to talk. Come on, now. Where do you work, Dave? Fisherman's son. What do you do? What's your work? Tom. Your landlady says you hit her. Yes, sir. With what? A hot plate. Something you cook on? Uh, yes, sir. I was cooking. She said I was smelling up the building. Why did you hit it? Oh, it's a long story, Sergeant. You'd have to know my landlady. Okay, number three, Ivan Cyberling, drunk and disorderly. Any of these men, Mr. Hunter? No. no. Great Park, 644 North Hodgson, Great Park. Don't tell me. Tell the people out there. Yeah. What do you do, Ivan? Construction engineer. You were pretty drunk. Yes, sir. The arresting officer said he's had complaints before. Yes, sir. She has complained for a week. Who's she? My wife. You live at 644 North Hudson? Yes, sir. The report says you broke a window at that address. The door was locked. I broke one other night, too, when she locked me out. I will keep right on breaking them until she leaves the door unlocked. Maybe you'd better stop drinking. Yes, sir. Any questions or identifications from the audience? How about it, Mr. Hunter? Number two was picked up in your neighborhood. No. Any questions or identifications from the audience? Okay, we'll look at the next bunch. Nothing, Matt. All right. All right, run them off. Bring on the next line. Have a coffee, Mr. Hunter? Thank you. Now, yeah, we won't keep you much longer. There you are. Thank you. Sergeant Greb should be here any minute now. I... Hi. Uh, this is Mr. Hunter, man. Sergeant Greb. Well, how do you do, Mr. Hunter? Sergeant, grab a chair, man. Thanks. Hey, I voted for you in the last election, Mr. Hunter. <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, didn't you spot anybody in the line at all? No, I didn't. Coffee, man? Uh, no, no, thanks. Mr. Hunter can't think of anybody who'd want to kill him. And you can't remember seeing anybody suspicious hanging around your house? No, no, I, I can't, Sergeant. Well, none of your neighbors saw anybody either. Now, here's the report from the lab. The bomb was a time bomb. Found pieces of an old alarm clock. From the size of the explosion, must have been about eight or ten sticks of dynamite. <laughs> sure lucky you and the family were in the back of the house. Very lucky. Now, we'll do our best to catch whoever it was, sir. Well, probably just a crank. A man like myself, politic. A 
public figure makes a lot of enemies for one reason or another. Maybe this one didn't vote for me last election, Sergeant. <laughs> Come to think of it, maybe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we may want to talk to you again, sir. And... Oh, pardon me. Guthrie. Yeah. Oh, yeah? How long ago? Anyone hurt? Right, sure. Another bombing. What? Friend of yours, Councilman Adams. Well, was he hurt? Yeah, both he and his wife. They're in the hospital. They've got a child. No, the child's all right. Ruined the house. Were Adams and his wife hurt badly? Well, I don't know. Ambulance took him away. I'll have to check with the hospital. Uh, this is awful. Everybody should certainly be warned. Well, they will be, including the mayor. We'll put a man with you and your family, Mr. Hunter. In the meanwhile, we'll go and look at Mr. Adams' house. Thinks maybe he saw the guy who planted the bomb. Oh, well, let's go talk to him. Uh, go over and talk to Chief Anderson, Matt. See what he's got to say about the damage. Sure. Yeah. This man's a neighbor. His name's Crump. Uh, Mr. Crump. Hey, yes, Sergeant. Uh, this is Lieutenant Guthrie. Hi, uh, yeah, Mr. Crump. Oh, glad to meet you, Lieutenant. Uh, let's move over here where we can talk. All right. All right. Now, uh, tell the lieutenant just what you told me, Mr. Crump. Well, at about 4.30, I was working in my backyard mowing the lawn, and I, I saw Mrs. Adams get into her car and drive out of the garage. Well, about a, an hour later, I went around front to get the hose, and I, I saw an old truck pull up across the street. I saw a man get out, kind of a, an old man, you know, old clothes. Mm -hmm. He went around the, the back of the truck and took out something that looked like a box. It was about, uh, oh, about this big, I guess. Yeah. Then he headed for the Adams' house. A couple hours later, I was sitting in my living room, and I, I saw Mr. and Mrs. Adams pull up in front of their house and go in. A little while later, my wife and I were having dinner, and the, uh, the explosion happened. Busted most of the windows in our house. I didn't think about the old guy with the box until I found out what had happened tonight. I remembered reading about this other bombing yesterday. Figured that box the old guy was carrying might have been the bomb. Yeah, I see. Um, can you remember what this old guy looked like? Well, uh, uh, maybe if I, uh, if I saw him again. Mm-hmm. And what kind of a truck was he driving? Oh, it's a real old one, really beat up at an old Ford or Chevy. You know, one of those uh, pickups. What did you say? I said you didn't get the license number. Oh, no. Why would I get it? I didn't even think anything about it until after the explosion. Well, um, if you saw him again, do you think you might recognize him? Yeah, yeah, I think so. But all right, thank you very much, Mr. Crump. We'll keep in touch with you. Oh, glad to help. Glad Fine. to help. Get Mr. Crump's phone number and anything we might need. Right. I'll be up with Matt. Okay. Ben. Yeah. Okay. Come on, Guthrie. What a mess, huh? Yeah. Bomb do all that? Bomb and the fire. Used more dynamite than the last time. Blew this room sky high. Oh, oh watch out for the glare. Yeah. The center of the explosion was right about here. Uh-huh. Probably walked up to the side of the house, stuck the bomb into that opening in the foundation. Surprised nobody saw him. Well, somebody thinks he did. Well, you better catch this boy. He hasn't killed anybody yet. He's trying pretty hard. Paper says smell. How'd you make out with Crump? Nothing. He looked through the whole mug file, not a thing. <laughs> I talked to the hospital this morning. The Adams isn't going to be all right. No luck on that old Ford pickup? Uh-uh. Why don't you turn up the heat? Oh, okay. Hey, I'll bet we get a blizzard. We do, you know. <laughs> Guthrie? Yeah. And what was he wearing? Uh-huh. Well, that sounds like him. We'll be right down. Well, maybe we got the bomber. Yeah? Twenty minutes ago, picked up a man wearing old coveralls and a dirty leather jacket coming out of the state building. Spotted him. Followed him three blocks before they grabbed him. He's climbing into an old Ford pickup with 30 sticks of dynamite in the back of the truck. <laughs> Oh, 
All set, man? Yeah, Ben. I got Crump sitting out front. How many men are you going to show? Three besides the suspect. Uh, okay. I'll go sit with Crump. Hello, Mr. Crump? Hello. Oh, oh Lieutenant Guthrie, I couldn't see. Yeah, well, uh, we want you to look at some suspects. Oh, that's that's what Sergeant Grab said. Yeah, we think one of them might be the man who planted the bombs. Well, I hope I can help. All right, Ben, run them on. Yes, sir. Lights. Bring them on, Twain. All right, come on, move out to the end of the stage. Come on. Down the line. They all got on coveralls and leather jackets. I'll take a good look. All right, now, ten... The man on the end, Lieutenant. Yeah, what about him? Yeah, that's the man, no doubt about it. I I remember better than I thought I would. He's the one that got out of the truck, all right, the the one with the box. All right, Matt, run him off. Yes, that's all. I'm off. Well, we'll need a statement from you, Mr. Crump. Oh, sure. Um, what were the others arrested for? They weren't, Mr. Crump. Three others were police officers. Edmund O'Brien, who plays the title role in yours truly, Johnny Dollar, will be on his latest case tomorrow night over most of these same CBS stations. In one of his most thrilling investigations, Johnny Dollar goes to London to join forces with the men from Scotland Yard in the hatchet house theft matter. How that London trip had Johnny Dollar's famous old expense account. Don't miss Johnny Dollar on Wednesdays. It's going to be a tough nut. Arresting officers couldn't get a thing out of him. We've got men over there talking with people in the state building. So far, nobody remembers seeing him come in. Yeah. Name's Lewis Black, huh? Yeah, driver's license gave his address at 1910 East Flower. Ash is over there now checking. I wonder what he was doing in the state building. Yeah, I'm worried, too. I wonder if... Oh, no. No, he couldn't have. A big building. I hope you're right. Hello, Lewis. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. This is Sergeant Grimm. Quinn? Yeah. We'll see you upstairs. Right. Sit down, Lewis. I want to talk to you about these bombings. We know you made those bombs. A man saw you walk up to the Adams house with one of them. It's sheer cold in here. Yeah, it started to snow. That's right. That's right. Why don't you tell us about it? Well, I made them. Sure. Why? I made them. I don't have to tell you why. You put one of them under George Hunter's house. You know him? Know who he is. But you don't know him personally. No. Did you know Adams? No. Well, then why try to kill him? Isn't there a heater in here or something? I've been out of work. Been out of work long? Yeah. Hunter or Adams have something to do with it? (laughs) You sure want to know why I made those bombs, don't you? We'd like to know. It's no fun being out of work. I've been out of work for a long time. You ever been out of work? Yeah. Well, then you know it's no fun. Try to get a job? Oh, sure. I couldn't. I kept trying. Just couldn't get one. Look, do we have to sit in here? It's really getting kind of cold. We'll get out of here as soon as you tell us about but it. Don't try to push me. I don't like being pushed around. I can stand it down here just as long as you can. We're not trying to push you. No? No. We don't like this any better than you do. It's just a job. If it weren't us, it'd be somebody else. If you had a job, you'd try to do it the best you could, wouldn't well, you? Sure, I used to have jobs all the time. I always did the best I could. What kind of jobs did you have? Oh, all kinds. I was minor once. I worked in Pennsylvania. Is that where you're from, Pennsylvania? Yeah, I did all kinds of jobs once, then I couldn't get it to nobody. Give me a job. Half the trouble is not enough jobs. I got to do something about getting jobs for people. Ah, a bunch of dirty politicians. They don't worry about guys like me. They make speeches, sure. Yeah, they get elected. They don't do nothing. Like Adams and Hunter. You're darn right. Adams hunted a whole bunch. Even the mayor. Sure, the mayor. And the governor. He's the worst one of the bunch. He's the biggest. He could do something if he wanted to, but he don't. I ain't had a job in three years. You'd like to take care of him like you did Adams and Hunter, wouldn't you? Uh, 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 (laughs) I'm not going to tell you anything. You think I'm going to tell you something, don't you? But I'm not. What were you doing in the state building? Why don't you try and find out? Look, Lewis... 
We don't want you to get into any more trouble than you're already in, I don't so... want to talk anymore. I want to go back to my cell. I'm cold. You can go back to your cell as soon as you talk. Oh, Lieutenant, can I see you a minute? Yeah, come on. Sergeant, can we have some heat in here? I'm cold. Then we've got a janitor upstairs in the state building. He remembers seeing Louis Black come into the building by the side entrance. He says Black was carrying a big box. Holy... Look, see that the state building's cleared as fast as possible. Rope off the street. Step on it. Right. Lewis, I just found out that you planted a bomb in the state building. I don't care what you found out. I'm not going to tell you. I'm tired of playing with you. Where's that bomb? Where did you put it? Oh, sugar, you can do anything you want. Get rough. Beat me. I won't tell you where I put that bomb. Well, at least tell us when it's set to go off. What time is it? It's uh, six minutes to five. (laughs) You won't find it. How much time? About 40 minutes, I guess. Everybody's out of the building. You find out where he put it? No, he wants it to go off. We got him over in the car with Walter and Asher. They'll keep working on him. Uh, it's army car. Captain Phillips, demolition expert. I'm Phillips. Thank God for you. Hope we can use you. Know what kind of a bomb it is? Quiet, I'll tell you all we know. We've got to get into that building and try to find it. Uh, right. 30 men are there now covering every floor. Who's in charge? Harrison. He's in the basement. Come on, man. What time is it? We've got about 25 minutes, more or less. Any luck? Yet, Lieutenant. Harrison's still in the basement? Yeah, yeah, he's down upstairs. Thanks. Come on. All right, all right, they'll be sure to check it out. Yeah. Take it thorough now. Harrison. Yeah, over here, Ben. Big. Well, any luck? No. How much time we got? Less than 25 minutes. What orders did you give? Well, if the bomb's found, it's to be taken directly to the street. If we've still got any time left, the car will drive it to a safe place. That army man get here? Yeah. Well, this is the way I want it to go. It's uh, 5.13 by my watch. I set your watch. Right. Now, at exactly 5.25, order your men out of here. Tell them they've got 10 minutes to get clear. We'll go tell the rest on the other floors. All right, Ben. All right, men. Come on. Look, we've got the stairs. Can you run an elevator, man? Well, sure. I'll take the second floor. I'll take the ordinance, third, fifth, and so on. Be sure they set their watches with yours. Right, Ben. Sergeant. Yes, sir? You got a watch? Yes, sir. Set it with mine. Five seconds, it'll be 5.14.35. Now. Okay. Have all your men off this floor by 5.25. 5.25, yes, sir. Everybody's out. Yeah. Well, what do we do? That's a good question. Black wasn't lying. We've got something like ten minutes. Man. Yeah? Go out to the car and get Black. Huh? Go out and get Black. Maybe the last thing I do, but I'm going to find out where that bomb is. Who's going to watch Black while you get it? I'll worry about that when I get to it. Uh-uh, I'm staying. Okay, I can't argue. How about it, Black? You want to tell us where it is? You never find it. What time is it? 5.28. Ah, oh, you can't scare me. You think if you keep me here, i tell you where the bomb is, eh? About five minutes, sir. I guess so. You're not very smart, are you? I said 40 minutes. Well, maybe 40, but maybe not. I can't be sure. Might go off in a second. I guess so. Ah, oh, who are you kidding? You won't stay in here. You're scared. Listen, Black, you're darn right we're scared. But so help me, you're going to tell us where that bomb is or it's going to blow all of us sky high. Now shut up unless you want to tell us. I'm not afraid to die. Well, you're going to have a chance. Eight stories in this building. Yeah. If it's too far away, we may not have time anyway. Let me out of here. I'm not going anywhere. You're going to stay right here until you tell us where it is. I'll tell you. 
you, I won't. Well, I shut won't up. Five twenty-nine. Black, you're not doing anything but wrecking a building and killing yourself. You can't get the governor. He's been taken out. Can't make me tell you. Okay, okay. How much dynamite's in that bomb, Lewis? Fifty sticks. Hope you guessed right about the time. Ben? Yeah? I told you what you know. Oh. Gonna be a big one. Lewis, why don't you tell us? I can stand it if you can. 5.30. All right, all right, all right. I'll tell you, it's in the beat. Show us. All right. Step on it. How much time is it? Not much. Can you stomp it? Yeah, yeah. No, no, where, where? It's up there. On top of the big pipe. You see in the back? How did you get up there? Here yeah, with the ladder. Where's the ladder? Everything's been moved. Forget yeah. the ladder. Show us the spot. Yeah. Right about here. Give him a boost up. Come on, come on. Put your foot in my hand. No wonder we couldn't find it. You see it? Yeah, yeah. Well, grab it. All right. All right, hand it down. <clears throat> okay. Let's get out here. Let it go off. We don't care. We might not have time to stop. Can I tear off these boards without setting it yeah, off? Yeah, yeah. Well, explain it to me while I rip them off. I don't know. I don't remember. Please, let's get out of here. If you want to get out of here alive, yeah. you better remember. Well, this is dynamite. It's an old alarm clock. It's batteries and breakers. Uh, the alarm goes off and causes the circuit in the batteries. <clears throat> Okay. Now take it apart. No, 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 no. Let me get out of here. You're going to stay right here. The floor is all out of you. Now you settle down. Come on, Lewis. Tell me. Tell me what to do. The wires from the battery to the dynamite pull them loose. Please? Yes, yes, yes. Those. Okay. <clears throat> now you sure that does it? Yeah. All right. Let's get it out to the street. Can you make it all right, Ben? Yeah. <clears throat> all right, let's go. All right, Lewis. What is it? That's the alarm clock. Those wires. Give me that thing. It would have. It would have. Oh. It would have. Ben. I may be. Uh, I may be late to the station in the morning. I'm going to take my alarm clock and throw it as far as I can. <laughs> The innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again an hour earlier, a week from next Thursday, when we will again bring you The Lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there in the side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention? The Lineup. Starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Greb is written by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Howard McNear was heard as Lewis Black. Featured in tonight's cast were Jim Backus, High Everback, Sidney Miller, Peter Leeds, Joe Duval, and Harry Lang. The lineup is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs> Beginning next week... The lineup will be heard on a new day at a new hour, Thursday night at 9 o'clock Eastern Daylight Saving Time. This is Dan Coverly inviting you to join us July 5th, a week from next Thursday, when we will again bring you The Lineup. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.